Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colts, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to send out a few scheduled emails via workflows inside of the CRM. Before we get into it, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave that in the comments section below as we try to answer each and every one of those each and every week. Alrighty, and with that, let us get right on into the walkthrough. In this case, I'm going to use the deals module as our place that we're going to trigger this from, but just know that this same method I'm going to show you is going to work in basically any module, right? So if you wanted some leads going out or emails going out about leads, it's going to work there, contacts, deals, really anywhere where you have access to an email address. Um, so in this case, I'm going to pull up just any old deal. I'm just in one of our demo accounts here. So I've got a deal here that is in the needs analysis stage. And, you know, this implementation and this kind of walkthrough, we're going to be setting up some scheduled emails. So let's imagine that we want to have a workflow where when we move things into proposal slash price quote, we want to automate some follow-up activities, right? So that we don't have to remember to send a check-in email about a particular proposal. To do that, I'm going to open a new tab and we're going to go over to workflows and our settings. So I'm in the setup here in the top right. And we can go into our workflow rules under automation. This is where you go pretty much anytime you want to set up an if then statement. So if a deal moves into proposal slash price quote, then schedule these uh, emails to go out. So I'm going to create a new rule. I'm going to pick our module, pick deals. Again, if you wanted this to be an email to a lead, you'd, you'd pick leads. Give it a name and a description. This workflow automatically sends proposal follow-up emails. It's pretty self-explanatory given the rule name, but never hurts to add a description when we're making workflows. And so here I'll do kind of a quick crash course on a few different ways to trigger workflows. So out of the gate, we can do a record action, which would be like a create, an edit, a delete of a particular record. We can do things based on a date. So maybe we'd want an email notification to go out, you know, based on a closing date, based on when it was created. And then we can do things based on changes to score. In this case, because we want to base the automated emails on the stage moving to proposal slash price quote, we're going to do a record action. And we can either do this as a create or a create or edit. And you might think, you know, when would I use one? When would I use the other? Right. So a, a create or edit is more of a catch all. Right. So let's say that you know that your team occasionally might have a deal come in that gets created when we send the proposal. Now, shouldn't happen generally, but we might want to accommodate for it. Or you could say that shouldn't happen and we don't want to set it up as the rule. In this case, I'm going to do an edit workflow and I'm going to say when stage is modified to the value proposal price quote. So that's kind of our initial trigger, right? Where it's going to check the criteria and proceed if everything matches. And now here we can apply a filter or a criteria. So, you know, you could think of things like maybe this should only happen for new business and not existing. Uh, maybe this should only happen for deals above a certain amount. I'm going to keep it simple here and just say we want this for all deals, right? But this little criteria section is your opportunity to trim down some of the things that would be running through this automated process. I am going to add one criteria though and say where stage is proposal price quote. And you're going to look at this and think, well, isn't this kind of redundant, right? If we've just updated stage to this value, well, surely it would be in this value, right? And that's true for this instant action, right? So if we wanted to do something like send an email immediately, right? Then we can come in here under notify, notify via email. And let's say we want to set up this email template to go out, right? But what happens when we want to schedule these, right? So let's say that we have email number one, which is, hey, thanks for our conversation. I've just sent you a proposal. Let me know if you have any questions, right? But let's say we want to have a couple days later, or not business hours, pardon me, a couple business days later, we want to send another email, 
right? So I can have this scheduled action with a delay of three business days. I can notify via email. I'm going to create a new notification this time so I can show you how to do that. Previously, I used one that already existed, right? So here I'm going to create an email notification. I'm going to give it a name. We'll say proposal follow-up or deals. We can choose who this should go to. So in this case, we'd want it to go to the contact related to that deal. So you don't actually need to copy that email address into the deal itself, right? As long as it's stored um, in that related contact, you will be all good to go. Now here, I'm going to choose our template. I just have a really simple one here. Uh, I'm not the best writer, so I just made a really quick and easy template. Just, you know, hey, John, just checking in on the proposal. So I'll choose that as our template. And then we can decide who it should come from, right? It can come from a standard single email address, or you could send it from whoever owns the record. That's normally what I do, right? Because if I'm the one who owns that deal, I'm probably the one who sent the proposal, and I should probably be the one who this email sends from. So even though that user isn't actually sending this, it can send as them via the CRM. And now let's say I wanted one more follow-up. It's going to look redundant, but I'll explain it in just a moment. Let's say I wanted to do another three days. So basically day zero, they get one immediately, day three, and then day six. Here, we would have six days after the um, after this rule is triggered. Now I'm highlighting this purely just to show these days don't stack on top of each other. This six days here refers to the original update to send it into this workflow, right? So it's not going to go out nine days after, right? It's not three plus six. Each one of these is totally independent and you need to set the days based on when you want it to go out based on that original trigger. Now, the last thing we're probably thinking about is, well, what happens on day five if they get back to me, right? And they say, yeah, I want to I wanna move forward, but we've got a couple things that we need to figure out, right? About some nitty gritty details. So in that case, as a sales rep, I'd move them to that next stage, right? Negotiation slash review in this case. And the trick is by having this criteria here, you're basically saying if at any point the stage moves off of proposal price quote, cancel these scheduled actions, right? And that's a really important thing to keep in mind. It's why we put this criteria here, right? If I just had it at the top level, let's say I just had all deals, well, now, this schedule is set in stone regardless of what happens, right? But if I keep that criteria in, what it will mean is that if that stage moves, maybe it goes to closed one, maybe it goes to closed lost, maybe it's negotiation, right? But either way, they shouldn't get an email follow-up, right? The worst thing to have happen is that a customer agrees to a proposal and then two days later they get a, hey, just checking in on the proposal email, right? We always want to avoid those like negative touch points. Right, automotion, automation can do a lot of work for us, um, but we need to set it up intentionally not to cause us any problems. So I'll go ahead and save this now. Now it's in our workflows here. And then I'll show you on the deal side of the house kind of what this looks like and what you can expect to see when you have a workflow active for a record. So right out of the gate, we've got our records. We've got a related contact. I'm gonna go ahead and move it to proposal slash price quote. I'm gonna give the record a quick refresh, make sure a couple things can happen behind the scenes here. Now, looking at our record, what we'll see is that in our timeline, we can actually go ahead and just pull it right up and see what's going to happen. So when I move that over to proposal slash price quote, we can actually see here that these future emails are scheduled, right? They're upcoming, right? This initial email did not send purely because this is a demo contact with a fake email. And so the serum doesn't want to send it to them. But we can see that these future emails are scheduled to go out based on our workflow. And here's that final really important step. If I move it over to negotiation slash review, those aren't upcoming anymore, right? They're no longer going to receive that check-in on the 28th and on the 31st because they're no longer in that stage. And that's just a really important thing to make sure that you do properly with these types of workflows to make sure that you're getting the value and that you're not creating these kind of negative or clumsy touch points with your prospects. And so with that, I think we've covered kind of the core steps here to be able to automate a quick little email follow-up. You know, you could use these for one, two, three, four emails, right? There is a consideration on bigger outbound marketing pushes to consider Zoho campaigns. 
But for these kind of deal or lead focused emails, this is a great way to get it done. So thanks for watching. I hope you did find this video useful. Uh, if you did, please be sure to like and subscribe down below because that really does help us out. Uh, and if you have any questions, feedback, or comments, please leave those in the comments section as well as we try to read and respond to each and every one of those every single week. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.